Good morning. So moving on to uh, the notes for day three, or Wednesday. Today we're going to focus on average rate of change. And another word for average rate of change is slope. And the slope formula, okay, average rate, so we're comparing things, is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I started to write the x1. All right. You might have heard is it uh, of it as rise over run. So you can be told the two points, uh, in this case, our points are on a table. So at the top, we've got x and f of x. And remember, f of x is just y, so this is x, y. Our points are 1, 18, and 3, 30. 5, 42, 7, 54, and 9, 66. So we need to find the rate of change over the interval 3 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 9. So you look at the table where x is 3 to x is 9. So these are the two points you want to use. Okay, so this gives us the points 330 and 966. So there's your x1, y1. There's your first point. The subscript just stands for point 1 and point 2. So we take our y's. Okay, so that's up top. We have to subtract them. Second minus first. So we do 66 minus 30, divide that by 9 minus 3. So 66 minus 30 is 36 divided by 6, so our rate of change is 6. Okay, so that's the first part, is finding the slope from a table. Now, example number 2, we're given an equation. So the equation is f of x equals negative x squared plus 6x plus 17. So quadratic, and so our graph is a parabola upside down with a y-intercept of 17. Okay, the interval is negative 3 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 7. So here, to get the points, we need a table. So the table is our calculator. So we have to type it in. My batteries are still low. So go to y equals negative x squared plus 6x. I'm just typing over plus 17. Go to the table. Find negative 3. So it's negative 3, negative 10. And where x is 7, 7, 10. Okay, so y2 minus y1, so 10 minus negative 10. Don't forget the double negative. And then 7 minus negative 3. So two negatives turn into a positive. So we end up with 20 over 10, which is 2. Okay, so if they give you the function, no worries, just go to the calculator to get the table of... Uh, points. So then uh, we have a multiple choice question on where it says where is the average or where is the, so given a table, uh, from what point, so is the, actually I was going to use the f number one to explain but actually let's make another example. Example number three, our table, this time they use x and y, has the points 0, 14, 3, 53, 7, 76, 21, 121, and 42, 160. Okay, so where it says is the, I'm going to use abbreviate, average rate of change, um, the greatest. And your answer choices are from x equals 0 to x equals 3, 
second x equals 7 to x equals 21, then x equals 3 to x equals 7, and then x equals 21 to x equals 42. So draw your fraction bars for each one. So from 3 to 0, right, we know what the x values are, we can subtract. So 3 to 0 is here, so we subtract the 53 minus 14, 3 minus 0. I'm going to write down each one. 7 to 21, so it's 121 minus 76, 21 minus 7. 3 to 7, so it would be 76 minus 53 over 7 minus 3. And then last, 21 to 42 would be 160 minus 121 over 42 minus 21. And then you can go to the calculator. Uh, you can do the math, right, by hand. But you can type in the whole fraction with a subtraction. So 53 minus 14 up top, 3 minus 0, enter, 13. So this was 13. Um, 121 minus 76 up top, and then 21 minus 7 is 45 over 14, but let's change that to a decimal so we can actually compare. So 3.21, well that's out because 13 is bigger. Uh, 76 minus 53 over 7 minus 3, change that to a decimal, that's out. 5.75 because that's the biggest and then last 160 minus 121 and then 42 minus 21 13 over 7 well you know it's going to be um, less than 2 so math decimal so 1.85 so the first one is the largest okay so that involved a lot of math a lot of work on the calculator and I had to write this whole example out but you could just be looking at the table and typing them in so it'd be a lot shorter. Okay. Moving on to example number four. Uh, constant of proportionality from context. Okay. So this example says a store buys five sweaters for $50 and sells them for for $130. How much profit does the store make per sweater? All right, so let's break this down, okay? So a store buys five sweaters for $50. So they have a cost, okay? Their cost, so let's note that, their cost is $50. And then when they sell them, right, for $130, that's how much money's coming in, okay, which is called revenue. So their profit, total profit for five sweaters is 130 minus 50 which is eighty dollars right because that's for the five sweaters now if we want to find the cost uh, or profit per one sweater so the profit for one sweater we simply just take 80 and divide it by 5 and we get $16. That's the profit for just one sweater. So that's your rate. Okay, so the next section in Delta Math involves uh, matching a table correctly to a scenario or a context. So, um, 
it's not really too much to explain there. You can look at the tables as far as teaching and see which one matches up. Okay. And same with um, matching a graph to a table or an equation. You can simply just check the table to see which points are on the graph and check the equation to see if that matches up. So the next two sections are, are fairly easy. And then um, we'll look at another word problem. So example number five. Says Julian earned six hundred and thirteen dollars and twenty cents in twenty eight hours. So he worked twenty eight hours and got paid that much. The table below represents his earning in dollars and cents for X hours. So here's the table. for hours, X, and earnings, Y. So he worked 20 hours, so a little bit less. He should make less, and he does. 594. He works 40 hours, which is more than 20. He should make more. He does, and that is 1188. And then two more. 60 and 80 hours. So for 60 hours, it's 17.82, and then for 80 hours, 23.76. And it says that Julia, Julia, earns blank per hour either more or less, right, I'm assuming that's the drop down, yes, than Julian. So we have to find out how much Julian makes per hour. So that's going to be 6, 13, 20 divided by the 20 hours. And he makes 30, 66 an hour. And here we have to pick two points we want to use. So I'll just pick the first two, right? So we're going to do 1188 minus 594 over 40 minus 20. So open up the fraction key. 1188 minus 594 over 40 minus 20. Now that is 297 over 10 hours, but we want it in one, so actually divide 297 divided by 10, and we get $29.70. So Julia, she earns less. So this was Julia's earnings. So she makes less than Julian, and how much per hour less? we have to subtract these two numbers. So 30, 66 minus 29.70. And it, she earns 96 cents less than Julian. Okay. So another word problem, I should have had these printed out. Example number six, so let's write this out. Um, Josiah is moving and must rent a truck. There is an initial charge for the truck. initial charge for the rental plus a fee per mile driven, which makes sense. Let C represent the total cost 
of renting the truck when the truck is driven m miles. Alright, so we have a table. It's got M, C, and then for one mile the total cost is $22.75. For four miles it's $31. And for seven and a half miles it's $40.63. Okay? Determine the initial fee. So what is the initial fee is the question mark. All right. So again, we have uh, initial charge. So let's let um, X is the initial charge for the rental plus a fee per mile driven. Let's see represent the total cost. Okay, so when I'm writing this, we have um, the fee, right, that's going to be the cost per mile. That's a specific rate. So before we do anything to find the initial fee, we have to find that rate, right? per mile, which is our slope. So I'm just going to use these first two points. So $31 minus $22.75 over 4 minus 1. So let's do that on the calculator. So $275 is the rate per mile. Okay, so we have the 275 per mile plus this initial rate X, which is going to give us C. So let's just take, for instance, um, here, this point right here. Let's use this M because it's easy to use a 1, that M, and that C. So if I set the C as 2275, and then 275 times 1 plus x, which is 275, subtract the 275, and we get 20. So what is the initial fee to even um, use the truck, to rent it? Our answer is $20. Okay? All right. Let's look at the next section of Delta Math. Comparing two linear functions in context, okay, um, those are other word problems. And comparing two linear functions in context, which are other word problems. So because those are very lengthy um, and harder word problems, I'd like you to um, work out or reach out and work with either Mr. Hart or myself or else this video is just going to get too long. But just co combining some of the skills that we just reviewed in this video of writing um, the functions, right, and then comparing the two functions. So make sure you reach out and work with us one-on-one -on -one if you need some help with those. All right, have a good day. Bye-bye.